Hello, everyone, and welcome to the June 27 uh, Jupiter IPython meeting. Um, it's good to see you all. Um, if you're following along in the notes, take a look at the chat for the link to the Dropbox paper file where we are um, keeping um, additional notes. Um, and the first section of the notes is what's always in there. If you want to click through and get more news about any of the various projects, um, feel free to click through there. And um, I will go ahead and go through the agenda now. Um, IPython, who, who normally gives updates on IPython? It's usually Matthias. Matthias, <clears throat> that's what I thought. Does anyone have any news you want to share with about? Um, I think Matthias is traveling, right? Yeah, Matthias and uh, Thomas are at a conference this week. Got it. Okay. Um, so we will skip over IPython unless anyone has anything they want to share on that and move on to uh, documentation updates from Jessica. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead. Okay. So uh, we were working on a submission. We decided to hold off on submitting the uh, workshop submission, but I think that's something we should consider um, in the medium, the medium to longer term um, with regards to how do we think about where the new these new um, the where the Jupiter ecosystem stands in terms of reproducibility um, in the sciences, especially um, sciences that are very computational. Um, and um, we are going to be putting out a blog post for when um, Jupiter Lab is ready. I'm getting the demo ready for that. So that's going to be a big part of how we highlight things that are going to make sense for new users to uh, Jupiter Lab. Uh, additionally, um, I'm going to be including our uh, Google, ex Google Docs extension. Um, so I'm just going to be featuring also the video from two weeks ago um, in our blog post. Uh, so it's that's available. And I'm, let me just make sure I have, I'm not missing anything else. Oh, and then also I'm just um, figuring out some in environment stuff, just getting the demo ready and also thinking about what kind, how can we highlight things within the Jupyter community in demo um, that are particularly popular content um, from Jupyter Notebook through GitHub. Um, see if we can include any of those examples. Um, so that's what's really important. And those those videos, Jessica, or the demo that you that you're pulling together, is that a part of the tutorial that we had talked about, kind of in your first uh, week? So what we had talked about was um, using the demo as a way to um, hit all the major pieces in terms of what you can do using Jupyter Lab, um, okay. and we're going to hope to use that the blog post as kind of a higher level. Um, summary, and then we can kind of build off of that in terms of. Um, I know we were talking about like doing these Jupiter Lab days and being able to, to create right. lots of little pieces of parts from that. But um, this is kind of the the TLDR version of what we would be hoping. For. Okay. All right. So that's separate from this. Okay. And what's the status of the tutorial? Your audio cut out, Jessica. Hello, can you hear me? There we go. Yeah. Um, so I think the tutorial is um, going to be um, the tutorial is going to be built off of what we have from the demo. The demo is kind of going to okay. I see. Have all the pieces, those parts to kind of explore what sort of things you can do with Jupiter Lab, and then we're going to write content around that. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Thank you. And now we'll move on to updates on the notebook. No significant updates on the notebook, just um, triaging issues as usual. And we have a 5.1 release that is coming. Um, I think I think we can expect that to land in about two to three weeks. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Grant. And now updates on Jupyter Lab. Um, so there's a 
few new things uh, to talk about. Uh, one is that uh, the setting system now relies on using JSON schemas, um, which is some of the feedback we got a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and that will be going in any any second now. Actually, there's just one bug we're trying to resolve. Um, and uh, some continued visual work is happening. Cameron's had some more time to work on some stuff. And um, I think uh, the, the launcher refactor is also uh, changing a bit what you'll see when you first uh, use the app. So be on the lookout for it. But um, we ran into an issue caused by a known bug in Firefox, which makes large notebooks just um, very slow. Slow enough that uh, if somebody tried to open one up, it just it would really degrade their experience completely. Uh, and and we decided that that's too much of a liability to have before releasing beta. So we're working on fixing that. But that's that's that in itself has led to some uh, design uh, architectural issues that. Um, we want to resolve at the same time. Namely, we, we, we think that there's been a proliferation of signal conne connections and uh, the complexity that that brings with it and the overhead is just, it's too much when you want to do something like refactor the DOM structure of the notebook, for example, because this Firefox bug is a layout issue and the best way of dealing with it is to just move a few things around and use a totally different layout. Um, but we've sort of boxed ourselves in with, with the way we listen to data changing, and that has made it hard to do this kind of refactor. So at the same time, we want to move to uh, a more unidirectional data flow um, inspired by um, Redux, which instead of having uh, traditional MVC, where we have a ton of models, they generate signals, and people use people both connect to those and then have other models that are built on data that came from the parent ones and it it just it ends up being something that's hard to reason about at large scale and we've hit that scale i think uh this is ongoing uh there's a bunch of open uh there's, there's a new set of tools in phosphor the phosphor data store library and there's a bunch of ongoing work in uh, active PRs in Jupyter Lab. Um, and anyone who's interested in this pattern, uh, now is the time to sort of make your make your mark because it's it's right at the beginning where we're trying to figure out how how best this applies to um, Jupyter Lab. But we're starting first with obviously the most critical part of the notebook. Uh, so yeah, I know that's that's kind of a, a lot but um that's what's going on so i got a question um does that mean that there will be like a single state atom where all of the state of the application exists and then you know you have this unidirectional flow from there well so right now we're not using the redux idea of there being one single store for the entire application mm -hmm. right now we're envisioning multiple stores so um, so that we can port things over as they're necessary. It might be the case that for large parts of the app, having MVC is totally fine because it's like not that much complexity. It just turns out that when we have render mimes feeding outputs, outputs feeding cells, cells feeding, you know, like that, that sort of multi-tier of the, of the notebook is really where this is becoming a problem. It, it might be that once everything is ported over or once enough things are ported over, we might decide, you know what, the entire application state should be in there and we'll, we will have one store. Mm -hmm. But that's not a decision that's been reached uh, as of this point. I think that's an open question. So if you have, if you have opinions on it, like, yeah, you know, we should talk about it, all of us, because this is, um, like I said, it's, it's, it's just in the last few days, so it's new. Okay, so the, um, there's a couple issues on the Jupyter Lab repo. Yeah, is there an uh, issue where the discussion is happening? Okay. There's the, yeah. All right, cool. I'll, I'll chime in over there. Cool. Awesome.
Um, what this also means is that I'm sorry. One, one last thing. This this has, okay. of course, a big knock-on effects for uh, anything that's consuming our, our APIs. But particularly, we need to talk about what the effects on real-time collaboration. So we should probably follow up this call with another call about that subject. Yeah. That one's free. Sure. Cool. All right. Thanks. Anything else on Jupiter Lab before we move on? Okay, uh, Jason, are you ready for an update on Jupyter Widgets? I'm sure. Uh, I was gone for a long time and then came back. and uh, been working on this for another week, but other people have been uh, working on things as well. Uh, we're continuing to work through issues. We're down to 12 open issues. Issues are things that keep getting opened up. <laughs> we keep tamping it back down. Um, we've reorganized our NPM packages, which uh, is is uh, going to change a little bit of the development workflow, but it'll make the development workflow a lot easier, thanks to Lerna and thanks to uh, Phosphor and JupyterLab for giving examples of uh, how to use Lerna. Um, and we've got uh, Pascal working on an output widget. We've got uh, Vidar and other people working on other fixes. Uh, and and we've been fixing a, a number of smaller issues too. So uh, hopefully we'll have another alpha release uh, or beta release uh, this week. And uh, we'll soldier on. OK. Great. And it looks like it doesn't look like there's any updates on NB Convert. Um, if anyone wants to share anything on that, feel free to go ahead right now before we move on to services. Hey, so I think this was Peter, right? Yes? Yeah, I tossed a okay. couple notes in there about uh, Docker stacks. There's been good activity and contributions from people about making them easier to use a Jupyter Hub and Marathon and Kubernetes and uh, some general version bumps like Spark 211 is worth noting because that frees us to uh, use Python 3.6 in those images. So good activity. Uh, I guess there was one other thing I wrote in there since I don't have it in front of me. Um, we're also going to try switching over to using the Conda Forge R packages um, so that uh, the build process is entirely in the public. It uh, looks like that's going to work okay. We're getting support from uh, John Kirkham and company uh, making that a reality. But it'll be nice. It'll open up uh, installing R packages using uh, uh, the Conda Forge repos or from the Conda Forge repos. That's all I got. Okay. Thanks, Peter. And Carol, do you want to give the Jupyter Hub update here? Uh, no, we cannot hear you. Yes, I just have to find my little <laughs> button. Um, yeah, uh, Jupyter Hub, um, probably the highlights for this week is Helm Chart 0 0.4 release for using. Um, Jupyter Hub with Kubernetes is coming out, and there'll be a blog post about it later this week. And um, other than that, things are moving along, and um, we have some vacations coming up, but um, you know things will continue to progress. So things are good there. And then, should I do conferences too? Since I'm yeah, sure. Unmuted. Why not? That's your first. That's your first note. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, okay. So. Um, I was at JuliaCon last week, and um, for those of you that haven't tried Julia, it's actually um, a pretty uh, nice transition from Python and complements it well, particularly if you're using TensorFlow or something like that. Um, folks enjoyed Fernando's keynote. Um, there was lots and lots of thank yous and kudos for Jupyter and IPython um, that was used in presentations, uh, poster, on Sylvan's Extensor project, which had a lot of interest. And, and uh, uh, just an interesting note, uh, Julia Box actually supports uh, GPUs. So um, that was kind of fun to play around with. And then um, the only other note was I'm going to keynote PyCon Poland right before Jupiter, Ju JupyterCon, JuliaCon, JupyterCon, JupyterCon. So, but thanks, everybody. Awesome. Yeah, that's going to be a busy week, Carol. A uh, couple weeks, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Awesome. Okay. So um, no major news on JupyterCon um, other than um, a note on the next um, pricing um, bump is going to happen this Friday. So um, just want to put that out there. June 30th is is the current um, the current pricing remains until June 30th. After that, it will go up. And anything else in JupyterCon? I inserted some action items from the last couple of weeks um, into this checklist, but if they're not sure if they're um, if we've already worked our way through these, um, I think uh, the very first item there. I'm not sure who entered that in there. Anyone want to take that? Has that been done? Should I check that off of here? No, I am going to go ahead and take that off of there if no one's going to respond to that. And then the blog post and the screencast, Jessica, was that your action item? Yeah, the screencast, um, I mean, what we would had originally thought of, you know, I, I, I was to have the blog post with the, um, the video from the meeting so that we could show people real-time collaboration okay so I'll just leave that on there um, move it yeah. into the kind of older the older one um, <clears throat> and I don't really see um, us using these two sections very much so I don't know if I will continue kind of calling them out unless someone finds them useful um, they seem to be underused here. I don't know if we're actually using them as a way to keep track of things. So um, let's see how that goes for next week. After, otherwise, I may I may just take them off. Um, so the the next and final section, or actually, uh, is there anything that wasn't on the agenda that anyone would like to add at this point before we um, move on to releases and then close out? Okay, so I took some of your notes from the um, from the notes above into the releases, but if there's anything that you want to add or talk about into what was released last week, um, releases for this week or to be released soon, please add um, notes into those sections now. Um, and I feel like we've talked about everything that's currently in here, but is there any other releases that you guys want to put out there on people's radar? I'm I, will, that. Oh. I will add the notebook. Oh, that's this week? Uh, oops, sorry. No, a couple weeks. Okay. Yeah, I put that already in the to be released soon. Uh, so copied that over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so I think uh, that's kind of it. Any other uh, comments or questions before we close out? No? Okay. Well, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your week, the holiday weekend, and I will see you guys next week.